Hi everybody, welcome to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Sarah. Today I'm out in the garden and I am in between the two rows that are my absolute favorite in the garden. And those are the rows of peppers that we're growing this year. The pepper plants are growing fantastically. Everything is doing really well. We're gonna have a really great pepper year again this year. And I thought that now would be a great time to show you how well they're all doing. And I feel like I'm at the point right now that I can kind of do a review on all the different varieties that I planted this year and whether or not I will be planting them again. On our homestead, we try to raise as much of our own food as possible. We raise probably about, I would say, 70 to 80 percent of all of our vegetables for the year. Uh, we raise 100 percent of our meat, but today we're in the garden talking about vegetables. So with the peppers, I use a lot of bell peppers throughout the year. I dice most of the, the bell peppers and freeze them. I pickle a lot of the spicy peppers, banana peppers, and I do some dehydrating of the peppers. And this year I've just started experimenting with fermenting peppers. I just love peppers all around. I have a lot of new varieties this year that I have never grown before. And so I wanna share with you how they went and whether or not I recommend that you try them next year. Uh, or maybe you have some tips on why things aren't going as well as I had hoped. Uh, maybe you can share with me your favorite varieties of peppers. Now last year I did a lot of growing of peppers for spice mixes like chili powder, uh, paprika powder. I am on a mission to find the very best type of pepper for paprika, for sweet paprika. And I'm excited to show you a new variety that I'm trying this year. But I'm not doing chili powder this year in chili peppers because last year I grew so many of the peppers that I still have a lot of them dried in the house. So this year I concentrated on bell peppers and just some other peppers that we love on the homestead and things that we can also take to the farmer's market to sell. So enough talking about that. I want to jump right in and start talking to you about some amazing bell pepper varieties. The variety of bell pepper that has become my all time favorite bell pepper that now every single garden will have these bell peppers is the Emerald Giant. Two years ago, I got seed from Baker Creek for these Emerald Giant plants. These are the plants and they have quickly become my absolute favorite. I wasn't able to get seed for them last year, but I did save some seed from the previous year, so I was able to grow them this year. And I am so pleased again with the results. The plants themselves are very strong and stocky, although the peppers themselves get really big and put a lot of pressure on these branches. I have had a couple break, so I've had to go through and reinforce them and tie them to this fencing that we have. But the Emerald Giant pepper itself, let me show you an example. The peppers themselves are nice and square and stocky. Most of those that I have picked already this year have been actually a lot bigger than this pepper and this one you can see is starting to go red it's been on the plant for quite a long time I've been leaving it on there just to see if it will get bigger but the reason I like these is they're very sturdy they're very thick walled they're nice and heavy and I rarely have seen any kind of blemish on these themselves they don't get sun spots very easily and they're very hardy. So the Emerald Giant is what I highly recommend. The second bell pepper plant that I am growing this year is called King of the North. Now I chose this variety because it grows quickly and it was actually developed for states that are more north in the United States like Wisconsin, Minnesota, Illinois, those kinds of things because they have such a short growing uh, season. Now, they have been very productive. They've grown very quickly. And I'll show you that the size of these peppers is also very good. While these are very productive and fast growing, they're actually pretty thin walled inside and I really like a thick walled bell pepper. However, these are going red 
very quickly. Let me show you one that I have down here. And that is an advantage of a short growing season. If you're wanting your peppers to grow red quickly, these go uh, red very quickly. So that's an advantage for anybody in the northern states. But I think that I will stick to Emerald Giants in the future. So the Emerald Giant and the King of the North, those are the two bell pepper plants that I planted specifically for green peppers. But there are three colored bell pepper plants that I started this year because I just wanted to mix things up color-wise. I still actually have a lot of bell peppers, green peppers cut up from last year in the freezer. So I thought this year I'd just, you know, like to mix it up and try some colored bells because I'd never done that before. This plant right here is the orange bell, and that's actually what it's called, orange bell from Baker Creek. And the plants themselves grow amazing. They get really tall, they're very hardy. Uh, the bell peppers get very large. I'm very pleased with the size of these peppers. Now again, because they grow so many and they're so big, the branches get quite heavy and I've lost several branches on a lot of these plants just because you know, they got heavy and broke off. Uh, so, but, so in all of these respects, these are fantastic peppers. But because the peppers themselves have to stay on the plant for so long, they seem to start succumbing to the elements, the, the weather, the sun, the bugs, and they deteriorate before they ever turn completely orange in this case. So let me tell you, let me show you what I'm talking about. This one, for instance, is starting uh, to turn orange. It's not all the way, but you can see that there's a lot of marks on here. It's starting to deteriorate before it actually is 100% ripe. And that's happening on more of the peppers than, are, than I can use in the orange stage. So let me show you this one. This is so sad. I, I'm like heartbroken. This one was a beautiful green pepper and as soon as it starts turning orange, it's just, it's just deteriorating to the point where we actually can't use them. What I'm gonna start doing is just not letting them turn their color. I'm going to start picking these big peppers and using them and selling them as green bell peppers because it just is too wasteful to allow them to deteriorate and then we have to either compost them or give them to the pigs. In this case, because we have pigs now, these will all go to the pigs um, if they're too bad to use in the house. So these are the orange bell. Let's move on to the yellow colored bells that I have. The yellow peppers that I'm growing this year are called Golden Cal, and they have nice sturdy plants as well. They didn't get as tall as the orange bells, and the peppers are a great size, a nice thick walled but I'm having the same problem with them deteriorating before they turn yellow. Let me pick this one here and show you. I'm having the same problem where they start to deteriorate before they get fully mature. Now it's more than half of them that aren't turning yellow before I, they're unusable or before I can sell them or use them. Oh, even this one, I thought, I thought maybe I had gotten a nice ripe one without any spots on it, but when I turn it around, I see a yucky spot there. So there are good things and bad things about these colored bells, but I think that if I start harvesting them as uh, green bell peppers, they'll still be useful. The last type of colored bell that we're growing this year is called the lilac bell, also from Baker Creek. And I have a different opinion of these than the other colored bells. These guys start out uh, kind of a yellow, a yellow green, almost like a banana pepper. And then they start turning purple and they continue getting more and more purple until they are a solid purple color. They're actually really beautiful. You can see now they, they vary in size. There are some that have been very big and there are some that are fully ripe at about this size. So. I am much more pleased with how these grow. I haven't gotten many sunspots at all. They're not deteriorating before they get their wonderful, beautiful lilac color. The plants themselves are very strong. They're doing really well and they're really prolific. So I'm pleased about that. The downside about these that I've noticed is their flavor isn't really 
amazing. It's not super sweet. It's not super flavorful like a, a standard green bell pepper, but you know, they taste sweet. They taste like a bell pepper. Uh, it's just not a super strong flavor. They are gorgeous chopped up in a salad. I am not ruling these out for next year. Uh, I might look for a different purple variety that has reviews that, you know, that they have a great flavor. But overall, I do recommend these. They're beautiful and easy to grow. Let's move on to another type of pepper. It is sweet, but it's not a bell pepper. I'm really excited about this next pepper variety, and I'm definitely going to continue growing these year after year. This plant here and these peppers are Adjvarsky. They are a uh, roasting pepper. Look at the size of that guy right there. They're a red roasting pepper, and I'm so excited to have them. They turn this gorgeous bright red and the size of these peppers are ridiculous. Now I have experienced a little bit of sunspots on a couple of them, but we have some really intense western sun that they're getting in the afternoon. The plants get nice and tall, but again, because these peppers are big and heavy, I have had some branches fall off, break off, and so I'm having to support them. But let me show you just how beautiful these are when they're fully ripe and red. Look at that, you guys. Oh my goodness. Once I roast these, they are going to taste so good. After I roast these, these are big enough to have a slice of roasted red pepper on probably four sandwiches. And I bet these are going to make amazing roasted red pepper soup. I highly recommend these. They're called Adjvarsky. Actually, one of our viewers sent me the seeds for these Adjvarsky peppers, and I'm so glad that they did. Thank you so much. This is actually going to be part of my pepper collection every year. Okay, now it's time to move on to the spicy peppers. Next to me here are the Craig's Grande jalapenos. I've been growing these for several years, and they will always be in my garden. The plants themselves are so strong, they grow nice and tall. They're very prolific and they produce some nice size jalapenos. They are consistently hot. And the mature jalapeno, the red jalapeno, are so amazing. The flavor is fantastic. And that is what I use to make homemade sriracha sauce. Last year I made so much sriracha sauce and it was so tasty. I plan to make more this year. So these are the Craig's Grande from Baker Creek and I want to show you another jalapeno pepper in the garden that has completely surprised us. These jalapenos have been so fun to grow and have been a really great surprise. These are the natapenos from Baker Creek. They're a jalapeno pepper that is not spicy at all. They have been very popular at the farmer's market. We've been selling a bunch of them. They look and taste just like a jalapeno. When you bite into one of these, you taste the jalapeno and you wait and you wait for the spice to hit you and it never hits you. Uh, they are fantastic. And they look exactly like a jalapeno, you guys. Actually, this is bigger than the Craig's Grande. They have been fantastic. I've been using both of these kinds in my salsa. Fantastic for families that don't like a lot of heat in their salsa. Like our girls, they're kind of wimps when it comes to uh, spiciness. But they've been really enjoying this. Like I said, it's a hit at the farmer's market. So these natapenos, they were a surprise to us. But we were not even expecting expecting the next surprise that we have. Let's go see what they are. So last year I saved seeds from our emerald giant bell peppers and I had them planted next to the Craig's Grande jalapeno peppers. Well it looks like I had some cross pollination and when I started my emerald giant plants this year one of them turned into like a super jumbo jalapeno pepper plant. Here is the plant here. It was quite a surprise. These jalapenos are giant. Like that's not even full-sized yet. Let me find one down in here. 
I know it's full size because it's starting to turn red. Let me show you the size of these jalapenos. <laughs> Look at that, you guys. Look at that. Okay, so here is the jalapeno, And here is the Craig's Grande jalapeno. These are some major jumbo jalapenos. What a fun cross. These jumbo jalapenos are so perfect for stuffed jalapenos with cheese. You can wrap them with bacon or you can bread them and fry them. This is just a fantastic, basically accident from in the garden. Uh, it was really a nice surprise for us this year. I'm gonna take my chances this year and I'm gonna save some of the seeds from the biggest jalapenos that we get to see if I can grow more of them next year. I didn't know that that's what this was gonna be, so now there are emerald giant peppers on each side. So maybe it won't ever happen again, but it's worth a shot, it's worth an experiment. As we're going along through the peppers, I wanna make sure that I share with you all how I'm actually gonna be using these peppers. It's a lot of peppers. So for the jalapenos, I will be pickling jalapenos and fermenting them. I use a lot of them in my salsas. Kevin loves what's called cowboy candy, and I think he wants the two of us to share with you all the recipe this year. Last year I made a bunch of sriracha, but I did it in a way that didn't require fermenting, but this year I wanna try fermenting the red jalapenos and turning that into sriracha sauce. So I hope for that experiment. And lastly, anything that we can't use, we sell at the farmer's market. Next up are two kinds of yellow peppers. Uh, these here are Hungarian hot wax peppers. They're spicy and I absolutely love them pickled. I like them on my sub sandwiches, I like them on top of my pizza, and I actually really just like to eat them plain. I've pickled them and this year I actually started fermenting them and they are fantastic. You can see how tall and healthy these plants are. They're very productive. Uh, they have produced so many peppers that I've actually sold quite a bit of these at the farmer's market. So I highly recommend these. But there's a second yellow pepper that I want to show you. These are banana peppers and they look exactly like the Hungarian hot wax peppers. The plants are almost exactly the same as well. And we're having to be really careful this year marking the buckets that we put these in when we pick because we have these banana peppers, which are not spicy, that look exactly like the hot wax peppers. And we have natapeno peppers that aren't spicy that look exactly like the jalapenos. It's been quite interesting. And there have been a couple times where they've gotten mixed up and it's been uh, very interesting for the family to be trying peppers to try to figure out if they're hot or not. But we love these also pickled and fermented. These are one of Samantha's favorites. And I think that we will continue growing these as well. I recommend them as well. The last of the hot peppers are these little guys. Now I got these seeds free for Baker Creek. These are lemon drop peppers. They are pretty spicy. None of these are quite ripe yet. They're actually taking a little bit longer, almost like the Tabasco peppers that took forever to ripen. These will be bright yellow. They're pretty spicy. I tried one and it's at least as spicy as a jalapeno, maybe a little bit more. These are gonna be a thin walled spicy pepper and I think they will be pickled pretty easily and I think they'll taste really good pickled. But they have, apparently, they have a citrus type flavor along with being spicy. I only have three of these planted, but they are filled with peppers and they are filled with more blossoms. Last year, I did the same kind of thing with Tabasco peppers and Tabasco pepper plants. I actually planted five of those. Those Tabasco pepper plants were so prolific. I think I made 10 years of Tabasco sauce. I made two gallons of green Tabasco vinegar and I dehydrated 
several gallon bags of Tabasco peppers when they were red. I mean, they were so prolific. I'm telling you that it appears that these lemon drop peppers are going to be the same way. They're just going to be hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of these little yellow peppers. So I told you a little bit ago that I have this quest to find the perfect paprika pepper so that I can dry them and powder them to make my own sweet paprika powder for the house. I've tried several varieties and I haven't found the perfect one. This year I'm trying another new variety of paprika pepper. It's called, it's hard to pronounce, Feher Ozan. And so far they are doing really well. You can see that they start out kind of white. Well, they start off kind of whitish and then they turn this yellow. These are big peppers. They're fantastic and I can tell that they're thick walled. So they start out this color and then they turn yellow and orange and then a deep red. And it's at that point that I will harvest them, cut them open and dehydrate them and then grind them into paprika powder. These for sure are the closest that I've found to what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for spicy paprika and I'm looking for peppers that go a long way, that are big and thick walled so that they make a lot of powder per pepper. These are going to be on my list to continue growing, but I think the perfect paprika pepper is still out there. I've received seeds from lots of people and I still have a lot of varieties to try, but I'm so excited that this is getting me closer and closer to the perfect paprika pepper. I don't want to rely on the grocery store anymore. I want to find ways to produce our own food, including the spices that we use. So I am well on my way for paprika. So there you go, guys. Those are the winners and the losers on our homestead when it comes to peppers. You know, we really think that the Ozarks are the best place to grow peppers. We've had several years in a row of great pepper harvests. Pepper plants were something that we were really struggling with growing when we lived in the Phoenix, Arizona area. You know, I think there's a misconception that pepper plants grow really well in the heat but we didn't find that to be true at all. The Ozarks, I think, has a perfect environment. Not too hot, not too cold, and a long growing season. We're having such a good time gardening here in the Ozarks, and peppers are my favorite. So you guys, I hope you learned a lot today. If you have any questions about things that we have grown, uh, peppers that we liked or didn't, let us know. But I also wanna know what your favorite varieties are, especially when it comes to colored bell peppers. Have you had really good success with one variety that I should try next year? Let me know in the comment section below. You guys, thanks so much for spending some time with me today. If you enjoyed this video and you're enjoying our channel, make sure that you subscribe and also make sure that you share our channel and these videos with people that you know. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless.